I have the pleasure to uh, introduce in our midst our Father and the Lord, who, of course, by no means is a stranger to this family. Last year he was here with us. And this year, by God's grace, we will have the privilege of his presence with us in preparation for the General Synod of the Church of Nigeria beginning this week. We have in our midst our Father and the Lord, the Venerable David Chimezie Wanebe, all the way from New York, the Bronx, New York. <laughs> what do we say to him? You're welcome, sir. Graduate him. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for yet another privilege to be under your word. Speak to us again like you have done earlier now, uh, earlier, earlier before now. We hand over this moment to you. We take charge of every territorial demon and we pray that we subject them under the word of God. We say that the spirit of God will take control of this moment. Every spirit that takes away the word of God and uh, makes people not to listen, we bind you. Let the word of God come true now. In Jesus' name we pray. Please be seated. I want to register my sincere appreciation to the Lord Bishop of the Anglican Diocese on the Niger, the Right Reverend Dr. Owen Chiedozie Mokoro and Mama Niger for their doggedness in preaching the gospel. In the same vein, I want to also recognize my brother and my digital sub dean for the liberty he has always granted us each time we are around to fellowship with you. Something I and my family, we remain eternally grateful and we will not take these uh, privileges for granted. Thank you, my brethren, serving all with us together at the altar. I will continue to what word? I lack words to describe you guys. You are great. I will continue to reverence you, my fathers in God. Thank you. And for the congregants, once again, I'm here. I was here last year. It was a great reception. And I thank all of you for receiving us. And thank you for opening your doors again for the gospel through us. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. I will want to take a song. I don't know if um, um, you may help me. I'm not a very wonderful pilot. When I take off, I don't land well. So I would need somebody to land me. Hallelujah. Can you see what the Lord has done? What we were for has come to pass. See what the Lord has done. Can you see, see what the Lord has done? Can you see what the Lord has done? What we waited for has come to pass. Brethren, the Lord is indeed very good to us. For us to be celebrating our children today, it was thanks to him. It's indeed something we will continue to reverence him for. We waited 
a long time when we got married, a lot of us, to have these children. For some of us, it came quick. For others, it took years. For others, they came with challenges. But finally, they are here. And God has kept, kept them with us. We have great responsibilities about them. And so my topic says, conquering the evil influence in our families in mind with our children evil influences in our families i will take my test from isaiah chapter 8 verse 18 isaiah 8 18 quickly are we there okay i read Here I am, the children whom the Lord had given me, we are for signs and wonders in Israel. From the Lord of hosts, who dwells in Zion. The children the Lord had given me, they are for signs and wonders. I want to quote Chuk Stringwell, a preacher, a Chinese preacher, who says, Whatever else may be said about the home, it is the bottom line of life, and a veil upon which attitudes and convictions are hammered out. It is the place where life bills come through. The single most influential force in our eternal existence. Brethren, I want to remind us that a lot of times, the world downplays the value of family. The society where we live now works so hard to make family look so inferior, so immaterial. The age where we found ourselves talks down on family. And this is why you keep hearing in the Western world divorce in a very high rate. And this is where you start hearing women saying, we are equal to men. Whatever a man can do, a woman can do better. That is when you begin to hear that we don't really need a man in my life. I can survive without a man. But unfortunately, both those who don't want women or those who don't want men, they want children. Do you agree with me? This is why those who are gay, we go as far as adopting children, and they call them my children. But these are two male or two female who lives together that can never reproduce. But yet, they have value for children. But the world where we live today have made it so impossible for men to trust their wives. Because there are a lot of social vices that goes around that makes it so impossible for people to believe in family. A lot. And the same thing had gone into the church. The same spirit or theory is now in place. They don't even need the pastors. Men of God, do you know that recently, where we live, a church introduced a robot to be their pastor. They said they are getting tired with men. And so they have produced a very AI intelligence that we preach and pray. And so they don't need to hire a pastor anymore. So they play, the robot says whatever, and people go. This is where the world is going. I want to tell you that the society is working so hard to destroy the core values of familyhood or Christianhood. They are working so hard to destroy our faith. We will not allow it. I said we will not allow it. I, if, I, if you I hear your voice, shout it. Because people are already buying to that idea. What do I need God for? I, I, around here, we have this philosophy. The church is a scam. How many of you have heard that? If you go to social media, a lot of them are springing up. Well, each time when I flip my social media and I want to watch what my brothers around this part of the world, you see up there we have our challenge. Down here we are having another one. 
The Mami Water children and the Obanje children have taken over social media and they speak nonsense per day. They tell you you don't need uh, God. Hallelujah. They say pastors are scam. I cannot give my money to the pastors. Don't go to church. And they are so bold. In the early 70s and 80s, it was a shameful thing for anybody to come in public to say, I am a daughter of Mami Water. Am I communicating? But they are so bold today. They come out. They speak these things on social media. They say it anywhere. And the other day I watched again. They are even having crusades now. Hello. And they call it crusade for Mami Water. And you think people will not be there. People, a lot of people go to them. Native doctors have become celebrity native doctors. And we wonder how. When did this become our culture? Native doctors, how can a native doctor be a social media native doctor? Are you not worried that we are almost getting to the end of the age? Is somebody hearing me? Are you not worried that our children are being influenced? Are you not getting so much worried that very soon we were talking about the Western world with their issues? Now our own is beginning to spring up in another dimension. But this morning, I want to pray for someone listening to me. Your children are for signs and wonders. Yeah. All the evil vices going around will not overtake them. Yeah. And that is why I love what the subdean said. People commit so much money on their children over things that are irrelevant. They buy stupid things for them. But they never take time to talk to them about Christianity. And recently, I said something to my own children. I said, I have decided that in my home, no cartoon will be watched without me monitoring what you watch. And so your cartoons must be Christian cartoons. And my daughter said, Daddy, it's so boring. I have watched it over and over. Is there any other one about this Christianity? The cartoons we watch, they say the same thing. We watched Moses. And the other day, we watched Moses again in another form. And we watched another Moses. Can't we change another thing? Dad, I said, keep watching it. She then came to me. That was the day I realized that these guys put in certain things. They hide it under children's cartoon. Do you know that? They promote gay through children's cartoon. They promote secularism. They promote all manner of philosophies. And these things grab into our children little by. They get into them. And these children, they become so acquainted with this technology. Those who were around in the 80s and early 90s will agree with me that the church was seen as the last hope for us. Is that true? That is why if you go to the U.S. today, for those of you that travel, you will see very big cathedrals, bigger than this, filled with people of 80 and 65 years old. And you ask them, where are your children? They are nowhere to be found. Sooner or later, in fact, well, last month, I was driving by a church I worshipped nine years ago. And I have not passed through that road because I moved away from that area. But I was taking a friend home and I was driving past a very big church. Now I was, I saw there's a construction going on at the same spot. And I asked, what are they building? They said they're building homes for old people. They have brought down the church. They, uh, an organization have bought it, a Jewish organization, and they are putting up a giant building. No more church. And I have made further research. Their children were not in the church. They have gone elsewhere. And so, 
The last aged person just passed on. They sold the building. You may think it will not get to us. It is fast approaching. We must resist it. How? Through social media. In those days, there was no social media. So you could control what your children hear and what they know. In those days, there, there were no uh, uh, phones. You can control how, what information gets to them and what they know and what they hear. Those days, it must be letter now. For older people, you know, letter writing. If somebody wants to make advance to a lady, he writes. What do we used to call it that time? Love letter. Now they can be in their bedroom and communicate with people anywhere in the world and whoever, even demonic people, talk to them and they don't know. Are we not worried? And uh, while reading this morning, something came to me. Everything is becoming plus. We have Yahoo, iPhone, computer, LGBTQ. Everything is becoming plus. Have you wondered what is the plus? The plus is that they are going extra mile to do extra things that we crap down on God. Are we aware that children are now allowed, parents are now allowed to leave their children with no gender at birth? You give birth to them, allow them when they grow, they decide whether they will become cockroach or monkey. Is this is getting people worried? You may think it will not get here. The other day, they are promoting the same thing in Kenya. They are bringing it down to us. They want to force it on Africa. And we go there to collect loans. Very soon we will get loans and they will tell us that the only way to, the, the, we will leave these loans for you only when you accept these things. Because they are really interested in propagating the evil gospel. Their own kind of gospel. But we will have our children, those that will take over this cathedral, those that will remain here when we have long gone. We must work to protect their hearts. We must guide them. We must work so hard to look for a way to keep them away from the evil vices around them. Early 70s, we had black and white television. These televisions will open by four and end by 12. NTA News, you wait for it. These days, children no longer care about news. They get it even before you wake. And you may think you are intelligent. They are more intelligent than you. Our younger ones know more. Even seven years old, they know more than they should know. It should get us worried. Of all of this, for Christians, how do we fight this influence? The only way to fight this negative influence is to draw them nearer to God. Nearer, my God. Nearer. Nearer to God. That is the only way. And how do you do it? Bring them closer. Buy things that will always turn their heart to God. I will always use my daughter because the first one, I'm more interested in her why she will be the one that will influence the rest and so recently i spoke i was talking to her we usually have conversations about religion and she said to me my teacher told me you know they don't pray over where we are so thank you and one of my sisters was making comments she said buy bible for them i envy people around here a lot if they take bible to their own school it's a very big problem. They are not allowed to pray. And so I was worried. How do I identify these children as Christians? Anglicans no longer, we don't believe so much in cross. But it's also a sign of our faith. So I bought cross. I put on all my children. And she got to school. Her teacher said, remove this. I don't like it. 
And she said, my daddy said nobody should touch it because it was going to amount to abuse. So she, the teacher wrote and said, remove this chain. And so I went to their school. Entering to the school, I saw another girl wearing a gold bangle. I saw another student, a, a girl of about eight years old, wearing a big necklace to school. And I went to the teacher and said, what's wrong with the cross? Why do you hate the cross? You have a problem with the cross, but you don't have a problem with, uh, with the necklace. She said, we don't promote religion. I said, for me, I will not remove this. This is the only thing my children know. And when my daughter came, she said, my teacher wants to take away, because I said to them, this is the symbol of your God. My, she wants to take away the symbol of my God. They are working so hard. You may think it will not come to our nature. Those philosophies are around. Because we watch social, we want to behave like them. We want to copy them. We want to do the things the way they do. Brethren, it's against it. The faith we have is a faith we must guide jealously. We have a faith to protect. And one of the ways to protect them is to draw them nearer to God. And today, I want to encourage you, those of you listening to me today, I pray that you will open your hearts, open your hearts towards the gospel. And one of the ways to do it is to encourage them on how to give. Today is their harvest. The things they do today, they will remember tomorrow. If you don't teach your children how to give, they will never give when they grow. We are talking about influence. Influence them with the positive gospel and not the negative gospel. Influence them with the things that will draw them closer to God. And so God will change them for you. There are a few ways to do it. Build grace-based family. One, build grace-based family. Let your family anchor on grace. Which grace? The grace of God. Let that family God has given you be a family that will anchor and cleave to God and nothing but God by the way you pray. Your morning prayers. You are evening prayers. The way you talk about Christ. What do you watch in your home? What kind of movie do you watch? What kind of things do you do? Do you beat your wife? And yet you are one of the leaders of the church. They will grow becoming members of the church, but they will definitely want to beat their own wives. Do you live a fake life? Recently, one of our archbishops visited us during our harvest. He said something, and I'm going to quote him. He said he was preaching one day, and the wife was listening to him. And when they got home, the wife called him and said, Archbishop, Archbishop. And he, he was shocked the way the woman was. He said, what is it now, Mama? He said, do you believe in those things you were saying today? Archbishop said, I believe them. And in your heart, do you do them? Men of God, do, we, do our parents, our children, do they believe us? What we do at home, does it reflect what we do in church? And he said he went into his room and repented again. You can do sin. He said he, said he mentioned something that he, if had two days before that day, he committed that kind of thing in the house. And he was preaching, he was condemning the thing. And the wife was watching him closely. And when they got home, he said, Arch. Madam, when you get home today, look for one great name and call your husband. He will remember certain things. He's in church today. Oga, remember your wife. Give her a name. Call your children. Call them their names when they misbehave you will help in bringing each other back. Number two, teach your family how to worship. Worship is the only way to draw closer to God. Learn to worship God in truth and in... You know, eh? There is this 
Christianity, we fake outside, especially in this part of the world. We fake it. We fake a lot. There's a lot of fake Christians around our site here. We say things we don't do. We preach things we have never done before. We work hard, and people see us as Holy Spirit. But when they catch us in action, it's terrible. May God help us. We need to change from that. We must learn how to worship. Call your children early in the morning and say, Ebenezer, 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 my son of help, only you are my help. Ebenezer, My soul of help, only you are my helper. Is God the only helper you have? Is he the only Ebenezer around you? Do you still believe in your own strength, your wealth, they will fail you? If you think because you sent them to the best college, they will become the best people in life. Fa, fa, fa. I've seen children who went to the best of schools, even in New York, become drug addicts. I've seen people who went to Harvard become beggars. In my lifetime, I've seen them. I've seen people whose parents labored so hard to make them become the best people in life. Today, they are failure. I've also seen children who went to... I don't want to mention a school. Somebody here may be in that school, may be in that category. Yeah, at Onicha. If you don't know, I also grew up around Onicha here. I have pastored uh, at St. Christopher's as a church teacher, so I know there are some of those schools around us. Today, today, those who went to Harvard come to their door to knock for help. Where you are born does not matter. What matters is the grace that will catapult you. And how does that grace come? That grace comes only by your commitment to God. If you live a fake life, it will affect your children. What we do today affects our generation. So don't worry about the school your children are they are attending today. Oh, they may be the leaders of tomorrow. And lastly, we must teach them to obey and be humble. Teach your children to obey and be humble. Humility pays. It's a lot of pride and arrogant people around us. A lot. Two days ago, I went to Abuja and um, I went into a bank. After discussing with, uh, after my daily transaction with them, as I was walking out of the bank, there was this lady walking out with me, so I held the door for her. And she walked past me. She couldn't say thank you. She didn't look at me. She walked and I gently closed the door and I followed her. And so we got to a step. She said, something fell off her. She was having something that didn't fell. She said, can you pick this for me? I was wearing a jeans trouser, a, a spam slippers, and a t-shirt. So I bent down and picked it. She didn't say thank you. She walked away. And here comes another car. And she go, jumps behind the seat and she sat. And they closed her door. Bam. I turned and said, be humble, madam. It doesn't pay to say thank you. It pays to say thank you, pardon. And it may lead you to something there are people you look down on, you don't know them. Hello. Some of us are like that. Too. A lot of us are like that. Because maybe I was like that before I traveled. Where I come from is our culture. So if you pass, you hold off another person. If the person comes, at least you touch the door and say, thank you. That's humility. 
And those who do this are rich men. Very wealthy men who have seen it all. White people. But they still have that culture of let us obey the word of God and obey man. See, this thing we are doing in church is vertical and horizontal. Do you believe? If you say you love God, you must love man. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for yet another privilege to hear your word. Lord, thank you for ministering to your children. Speak to all of us. Change us, oh God. We need this change. We need to be better people. Teach us to be humble. Teach us to obey. Teach us to resist the evil influences that are already creeping into our society. And restore us to be faithful and good servants of Christ. Through Jesus Christ our Lord.